And we are very, very lucky to have with us tonight uh, Boris Johnson, our leader, our prime minister. And I know that uh, the history of Margaret Thatcher and all that she achieved is close to his heart as he tells us about the great uplifting um, prospects that we have ahead of us. Prime Minister, over to you. Thank you very much. Michael, good evening. Good, hello, good evening, everybody. Hi, 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 hi. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Wonderful to be back in the Guildhall after an absence of only a week. Uh, fantastic uh, to, to, be, to be here. Even a much, much more distinguished uh, gathering, of, of course, uh, in, in so many ways. And uh, look, but I, I want to say there's, uh, the, 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 the reason I'm here tonight, uh, above all else, is that I want to pay tribute to my friend Robert Colville. Uh, not, ju not just for his fantastic leadership of the of the Centre for Policy Studies, which is the, the preeminent right wing or centre right, centre right, <laughs> close, centre right think tank. Uh, uh, also, of course, for his thoughtful content. He used, used, to, used to be my editor, I think, uh, amongst many other uh, achievements. Well, it's very good. Uh, but also, I want to thank Robert for his work on the 2019 Conservative Party Manifesto, which I find extremely helpful, and the people of this country I also uh, enjoyed, evidently. Uh, but most importantly of all, I want uh, to commend Robert because, as many of you will know, uh, he lost his wife, Andrea, to the little-known disease autoimmune hepatitis. He lost Andrea at a tragically young age, just after the birth, I think, of, of your second son. And it's an earth-shattering event that is hard for any of us to comprehend, let alone uh, to imagine uh, that we could go through. And yet... Robert, you responded with extraordinary courage and forbearance, and you wrote movingly about your love for Andrea and the experience of losing her. And in doing so, in communicating so well, you've raised over £100,000 and launched new research projects with the Medical Research uh, Foundation. And I, I want you to know... It's a very, very small thing, a very small thing, but there's a little known tradition in Downing Street whereby every day the Prime Minister writes a thank you letter to recognise someone somewhere in our country for their service to others by officially making them a point of light. And uh, today I'm sending you such a letter, uh, Robert, and I think we have a framed certificate for you too because you are a true point of light. And on behalf of everyone here and indeed the whole country, I want to say thank you. Robert. There you go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and I'm very, very pleased to be here additionally, of course, because uh, this is a great celebration of free trade and the critical role played by Margaret Thatcher, if I've got the rubric right. I think I have. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm delighted to, to, to support that. But even her most uh, ardent fans, and I, I can see some pretty hardcore supporters here uh, tonight, would concede that there was a, there was a, there was a blot on the record. Uh, it, you know, first, of course, she did amazing things for free markets. She lifted exchange controls, she ended restraints on trades imposed by the, 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 the unions of all kinds, the so-called Spanish practices uh, of the print workers and others. Uh, she also decreed that you did not need to go to an optician to buy a pair of spectacles. You remember that? And uh, just think, uh, next time, as anybody, anybody who bought, bought a pair of readers in the, in the supermarket or wherever, you owe that freedom uh, to Maggie Thatcher, everybody. But she, she had a blind spot, which was, uh, if you know what I mean, uh, she, in, in the sense that she did actively campaign to join what was then called the common market. Uh, and under the terms of the Treaty of Rome, as is well known, uh, she handed or helped her, I mean, I'm going to be careful how I put this, because I, I'm an ardent Thatcher writer, right? I can say this. Uh, but she, she helped, she was part of the government that handed away this country's ability to control its own trade policy. And while she was always sceptical over the in inexorable 
extension of European powers over uh, member states. She was later persuaded that she needed to go further and to agree a, uh, um, another session of powers in, in the, in the mid-1980s. And I'm not going to name the guilty men who talked her into it. I don't know, I can't see any of them here uh, tonight. I don't, I don't, are they? They're not all dead, actually. Uh, they're most of them in the House of Lords. Uh, <laughs> they're very, very far from dead. Uh, um, uh, I'm not going to name them. Uh, but uh, my fellow uh, CPS disciples, I'm proud to tell you that thanks, uh, at least partly to your assistance, we have righted that uh, spiritual wrong and we have freed Margaret Thatcher posthumously from the ideological prison in which she inadvertently, inadvertently locked herself and we have uh, honoured the true meaning of her legacy and we have in the immortal phrase taken back control and this country has resumed its role as the great global agitator and com campaigner for free trade. And we've done free trade deals with 70 countries uh, around the world, plus the EU, plus New Zealand, I'm delighted to see uh, represented uh, here. We've persuaded the Japanese to eat more of our Stilton. How much more of our Stilton do we propose? Uh, quite a lot, I think. We, 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 so they had the option of eating our silver. I don't think, I don't, it wasn't clear how much they actually ate. But they, they certainly had it. We persuaded the Americans to eat not just British beef, but also uh, to get rid of uh, their punitive tariffs on, on Scotch whiskey. And we, uh, and to, I think to eat British lamb as well. Uh, uh, I don't know how they did it without British lamb for so long. Uh, and we persuaded Australians to dispense with the requirement that young British people who want to go and live and work in Australia uh, must spend, I think it was six months working on a farm. Do you remember that one? I, when, I, when I was told about this in the course of trading negotiations, I, I, it occurred, I, I said, well, why don't they make them stay nine months on the farm? I thought it'd be very good. For, anyway, uh, we've, we've dropped that. And we've done all sorts of, uh, we've done, as I say, about uh, 70 free trade deals uh, so far. And once we've got world trade humming again, and once we've cleared the backlogs and the bottlenecks that the world trade is currently experiencing, and largely caused, I think, by resurgent global demand. We are very ambitious in this country, and I see some uh, real experts on trade policy, and, and we know uh, quite what can be done, and we want to double our trade, uh, uh, the volume of our trade, to a trillion pounds. And uh, we are going to sell not just uh, uh, not just food, which I mentioned to extend, all, but, uh, but goods uh, and, uh, and services of all kind. And we're going we're gonna to sell the fruits of our imagination. And I don't know whether you, you've heard the news, uh, my friends, but yesterday I went to Pepper Pig World. And I want you to... Have you been to Pepper Pig World, uh, Sherry? Yes, I have. You've, uh, it's a fantastic... Okay, well, I, who's, hands up who's been to Pepper Pig World. Who else? Michael, Michael, Lord Spencer hasn't been to Pepper Pig World. Actually, very surprisingly, few of you who have been here uh, have been there. It's, uh, I was initially quite hesitant, but I found uh, that uh, that it was it was a uh, very much uh, my kind of place. Pepper Pig World. It had good schools, excellent uh, excellent uh, healthcare. There's a, there's a bear called uh, Brown Bear who turns up, uh, and, and I think he's called Brown Bear, isn't he? Dr. Brown Bear, uh, uh, you know, no, no trouble too, too, too great for Dr. Brown Bear, always turns up uh, for in-person consultations. Uh, has superb, superb infrastructure, uh, a novel uh, transport, uh, mass transit systems in, in Peppa Pig World, and safe streets, very safe streets, uh, virtually no crime that I could see uh, in, in Peppa Pig World. Uh, but what, what amazed me most of all, uh, was the discovery that this uh, have you, this hairdryer shaped pig, if you know what I mean by by Peppa Pig, has already got two theme parks in her honour in China and two, I think, in America, and she is currently exported uh, her her her. her her shows and her merchandise are exported to 180 countries around the world in a multi-billion pound franchise. Is that an astonishing thing? Did you know that? I, I, just, I, I discovered that yesterday. And I, all, I, all I want to leave you with this closing, closing thought. Think how much, how much more we could do when we revive the slightly moribund global world uh, trading, uh, the world trading system, and protect our uh, intellectual property with, the, with deals with the C CPTPP and others, uh, and and do more deals to sell uh, sell 
uh, fantastic products like uh, Peppa Pig around the world. If we can sell, if we can sell this, this faintly Picassoid uh, pig uh, to Chinese children, uh, as I think there is no limit to our creative abilities. And I, and, and, and I, and it, I, I also learned that Peppa's influence, her cultural, and she's got a brother, younger brother called George, by the way. Uh, Peppa's cultural influence is so pervasive that kids in America now say tomato instead of tomato and mummy rather than mom which is I think what they, which is what, is they don't they say mom mom okay right whatever uh, and and they and they say and, and, and anyway there you go and that is believed to be uh, as a direct result of the influence of uh, of Peppa Pig and that is the effect of the uh, of the free trade in which Margaret Thatcher uh, believed and uh, 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 isn't it yeah. it is it is so thank you it is so thank you Center for Policy Studies for flying the flag uh, for for Margaret Thatcher uh, for free markets and for free trade for so long and by the way I think this is being sponsored by the Daily Telegraph isn't it and HSBC, and HSBC. <laughs> Well, thank you, HSBC, for doing everything you do. Uh, and, and, you know, let it never be forgotten that in the dark days of 2008, there was only one conservative politician who said anything remotely favorable about the banks, and that was me. And I, and I, and I, and I, I, continue, I continue to believe that financial services are of, of crucial importance for our, for our country. I think HSBC is a, a colossal employer, not just in the UK, uh, but, but around the world. So thank you for, thank you for, for, for what you're, you're doing. But thank you also to The Telegraph, for your long campaign. Is there, a guy, is, there a, is there a chap called Chris Hope here tonight? Where has he gone? He had a ride when he got here. Maybe he's going where I've got to go. I've got to go to, I've got to go, I'm afraid I've got to go in a second to the winter, to the winter, the winter whatever it's called, the, 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 the black and white ball. Uh, but but uh, thank you for to the Telegraph. Well, Robert represents the Telegraph. No, not anymore. Who, who represents the Telegraph? There we go. I want to thank you. We've got to that has Nick to Nick. Timothy, great. Okay, well, I want to thank the Telegraph uh, for your long, your long, heroic, and sometimes lonely campaign for a new aquatic headquarters for the sales force of Global Britain. And uh, there is one overriding reason, I think, for supporting the new national flagship. It's not just the, the joy that you will... Uh, I hope you're still supporting it, by the way. It's not just the joy that you will bring uh, it to the face of, uh, of, of Chris Hope, uh, the kind of joy that you see on the face of an 18-month-old uh, child on greeting uh, Peppa Pig. Uh, uh, but the, the reason for doing it is it, ob it is obvious that uh, the uh, investment would pay for itself over and over again as British goods and services and ideas are championed and marketed uh, up every creek and inlet in the world for the benefit of the British people in every expo and every marketplace uh, around the world. And uh, with that final thought uh, and with that, uh, that, uh, uh, those thanks to the Daily Telegraph, I, believe, I, I just want to say that I think that we are now reclaiming our place as a great independent free trading nation, agitator, campaigner, paladin for free trade in a way that I believe would have made Margaret Thatcher very proud. Thank you all very much. Thank you.